Well, thank you very much. And uh, I really appreciate um, your inviting me here to, to talk today. Um, I'm, I'm going to be talking basically on this subject here, sort of, as much as possible. Maybe, maybe I, I, I'll uh, um, navigate off of that a little bit. But um, I think any painters in the room, those of you all who have painted figuratively or drawn figuratively, or even worked in landscape painting at any, to any extent, you, you might um, respond to this subject of look, think, and respond. And, and in general, uh, I, wanna be, I wanna talk a little bit about processes and some things I'm gonna, I'll, I'll just have to shoot through because I, I got a lot of slides and, and um, I hope we have a, a good time. <laughs> All right, so um, <clears throat> let's see if I can run this. Okay, so um, just one of the things that people have known about my work for a while is the work that I've done with quilts. And so I included this series of, of um, images to kind of talk about process a little bit and you know that look, think, and respond as a figurative painter, as a person who paints from life, you know, there's first looking at something and the importance of that. And usually in that process, for me, um, that's a whole process. And really, I hope by the end of this talk, you'll see that it's more than just a process of making work. It's a philosophy of life. So this is a sketch uh, of one of the backs of the quilt. I found the back of a quilt to be interesting. And I've done a lot of paintings of quilts. Um, I'll just go through some of these to show you the process of one, there's a process of looking at an object, working from it, but then there's also the process of looking back at the art, thinking about it, and then continuing to um, respond to that. So this is a large painting. The first was a study. It was a small um, um, oil pastel. This painting is about nine by nine foot square of the back of the painting, a back of the quilt. One, after doing the bigger piece, usually we think about studies being something that you do in preparation for the larger painting. But many times, to think about the larger pieces, I'll go to a smaller, smaller scale and just paint as a way of thinking about uh, the same subject. And this is the same, um, same quilt, but done at about three by three feet. And the, 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 um, the point here is just to see how when it's made smaller and sort of the same thing done again and again, how it, it's different each time. This is the same quilt, but just abstracted. And this is the same quilt, except this time the thought is what if I paint the front and the back? And what if I put them side by side so that you can see both the front and the back of that quilt? Um, and it's, this is done in acrylic on paper. And obviously, it's, it's, it's done in a sketchbook. You can see the sketchbook paper. And in, in, in this, this painting is also a thought. You know, before I, I, I look at it and I think, I wonder what that, that looks like. And so I do it, something quick, something fast. And then if that continuing thought or, um, goes on, then it becomes a painting. And obviously very different as a painting, the same thing. Um, and so I just thought there's something about looking and thinking and working um, and, and, and basically responding to, to these thoughts and this imagery. Um, this piece was in my last show at, at, uh, at Valley House. Um, those of you who know my work, one of the early pieces, it was the large quilts that people um, saw a lot. And so just kind of on this same theme, this was a piece called A Love Supreme. And it was four large paintings. They were about 20 feet long each. And they were designed to totally encompass the viewer. 
And so what you see there is a shot where um, you see the one 20 foot long panel and then these are the other panels on uh, different walls going forward toward you where you could see what it would look like being inside that piece. Um, and that was the initial thought. I was thinking, you know, there was a lot of, um, um, I had a lot of thoughts about creating this piece. And the reason I worked from quilts to begin with was the fact that my grandmother was a quilter. And um, after a while, at some point during graduate school, I, I realized um, that that quilting practice was a cultural part of, of, um, of my heritage that I never really acknowledged or even knew. It's kind of like a fish in water, doesn't really know the water. And this was a part of my culture that I, we were sleeping in the quilts, we were always around them, but then you never really think about it. But when I thought more about it, those quilts, um, they were actually like my grandmother's art form. And me as an artist, it was a way of connecting to her as an artist. So I thought of this as a piece. Um, here are some of the individual panels so you can see them. So this, this panel, each panel sort of represented a season, and this was a summer panel, and it's not all the way complete in this slide. And they're eight by 20, 20 feet long. This was the winter panel. This is fall. And this piece, which is semi-abstract, was spring. Um, I'd always dabble, you know, I did representational paintings, but I also did abstractions. And I really had a, a, a um, I was scared to let people see that for a long time. And at a certain point, you know, it came up. Uh, I thought about it and I decided that uh, I felt like I could show them. But here's the thing. So you create this piece. It's a large piece. It took me quite a while to make. Um, it's four pieces that are designed to totally encompass the viewer. And then there's the process of thinking about it. So I had to make changes to it. For one, it was a little claustrophobic being a 20 foot square. So we had to scoot the pieces back and you can enter in at the corners to maybe like the, the ideal setting is like a 25 foot room where you can enter in at the corners and you sit in the middle, you, you, you stand in the middle of the piece and, and are able to, the piece sort of forms a space. And that's really kind of important too because I have, um, I had a growing interest in spaces and, and never really thought about it, but um, I, was re I was kind of creating a space with these paintings, but I continue to, to think about that idea and as a way of thinking, um, I paint it. And so, for instance, while this is a 20 foot long piece, I got smaller and decided what would happen if I did the same abstracted group of quilts, but smaller where I could be a lot looser and go a lot faster. Well, this is what it looked like. It's about six feet long, um, a little over three feet high, and there it is. Um, there's something about like time and to think about a thing and to think about it again. And so even with this series that I call A Love Supreme, um, I, I literally, um, in a printmaking residency, I decided to create prints of the four seasonal pieces 20 times. And on the prints, I painted on top of them. Each one of them, I painted them and I distorted them. Here's a couple of shots of some of those. Well, I, that one at the, on the top left is really interesting to me now. It's in the back of my mind. Here's another one. And so at some point, there'll probably be a response of another large series, totally abstract of those quilts, but maybe it'll be drawing. Black and white would add additions of color like that, the piece you saw at the top left in the back. Um, I'm supposed to do 
a, a um, Elaine de Cooney has a house somewhere um, in the, this neck of the woods, and um, I'm supposed to do a, a residency up there, and those are the pieces I'm thinking about dealing with when I'm up there. Okay. So um, I wanted to, at, at some point in my process, um, I learned that I was, it's an interesting thing that I'm not only just interested in drawing and painting and working in a studio, but I'm also interested in projects. And um, I start this project called the 99% where the idea was to walk around my community, talk to people, and draw them. And I was going to draw initially about 99 people. And I wanted to get um, their thoughts and their ideas and make this community. It was the community that I grew up in, this Highland Hills. Um, and let me see if I can move this arrow over. Yeah, I just saw it. OK. So Highland Hills is an interesting community. It's small. And there's one way in, it's Oak Grove Road, and one way out is Oak Grove Road. Um, and it's, it's just big enough, though. It's small and it's out of the way, but um, I wanted this community, the voice of this community, to be heard. So I started this project. And, um, and this is uh, one of the... Um, this is one of the... the uh, these are some of the, the prints. It started as a process of drawing. Um, and I want to show you all this, this one going up, because I thought it was interesting. Uh, when I showed it at this museum, just the process of putting it, putting it up. But you'll also see it in, in variations, um, variations in terms of showing it. So um, there's the idea of all of these drawings. And uh, when I drew each individual, uh, I just walked around and I would find people at the corner store, um, gas station, at the um, walking up and down the streets. Um, and you know, I would talk to different people. And those people who would let me draw them, I would. And I would write down things from my conversations. And I went through this whole process of doing 100, well, over 100 drawings. Um, and then I went to a printmaking residency to create a set of prints from those drawings. Now, there's the drawings themselves, but then there's the orchestration of the drawings. And I've had several different orchestration of the drawings. One of, some of my first orchestration of these prints, there was the prints and the drawings shown together with paintings. And then this one was just a clean, clear orchestration of just the prints over a wall. And uh, if, if any of you all saw the, um, here are some other reorchestrations of that same project. It was shown like this once. Um, we painted a black square on the wall and reorchestrated the pieces um, to, to make this grid-like mass, but in a rectangle. This was at Steve Harvey. Gallery, if any of you all seen the show when it was here, um, I sort of looked at it from a fisheye lens there, but there was no frames, just the images on, the, on that long sort of wall. And here are some of the images up close. So um, there was all of these sayings. Uh, this, this guy was talking to him. Uh, they were outside playing dominoes, and he was telling me that he was a Boy Scout and that he achieved the Cardinal Badge. Um, and he said, um, 
it's not just how to survive, but it teaches you life skills too. Um, this lady, uh, really she was talking about a basketball player. Uh, who is that? World Peace. He, um, this is, uh, what's his name? Uh, he changed his name to World Peace. It was, uh, I forget the, uh, his name, but she says uh, uh, he's more like World War. This young man was very interesting. I, a lot of the younger people, uh, they would take off their shirts so I could see their tattoos. And so um, he had the date of his birth tattooed on his chest. But in our conversation, these are some of the things that came up. He said, uh, he asked me if I believe in Illuminati. Um, and he said, man, that stuff is crazy, you know, and, and we, were, we were talking about that. And toward the end of the conversation, we talked about, uh, he said, um, he was thinking about culinary school. And um, right now, he was going to get us a job at Central Market. The interesting thing is that um, that young man, he was serious when, he, when we had that conversation. He was just a teen, but he went on to become a chef and a great chef. Um, it's years later now. And what I found was that the process was so um, intriguing, how um, as a draftsman, I'm there and I'm drawing somebody. As just a person, I'm there talking to somebody. But there was something else in the process. There was listening to people. There was thinking about what they were saying. And at some point, what I can see was down the line is there was going to be a process of responding to what they said. I'm going to go through some of these. It's just more of them so you can see it. Um, here's, here's an interesting thing, thought. Let me see where I am. Here's an interesting thought. At some point, so there's this process of, you know, I tried this as a project. Could this type of project happen outside of just this community? Could I um, be direct, go into something, drawing, listening, talking? And then could it go to other communities or other groups? And then what happens if you have that opportunity to then react to, let's say, some of what people were saying? Well, I got a little bit of an opportunity, small opportunity, to take this same type of project to a different uh, community. Uh, the at the museum where you saw that show, there was a lady who saw the same show and um, she was working at a hospital. And so they invited me in, and through this whole long series of discussions, um, I became a resident artist for a short period of time, and I got to go there. But this time, I tweaked the process. I thought about it. I thought about what we could do in different ways. And I'll just show you some shots from that. So I went there, but this time I didn't go alone. The lady in the hat that you see near us, she's a singer. And we had did a project together at the gallery where um, I, I had paintings um, here. And I'll, I'll just kind of flick through some of these. Here's the drawing that I did of that uh, lady and some of. So the idea here was, can art, um, can art have an effect on uh, the medical industry? Can art have an effect on healing uh, in the hospital? And so they invited me in as a resident artist. And I came and I talked to patients, former patients, doctors, and people who worked there. And I drew them. And I listened to them. But I brought along this um, singer, and I wanted her to listen to them. Um, I brought her along because in a former project, Um, and I'll reach out some of the things sometimes, but some of them I won't. <laughs> um, but uh, so the deal with the singer was that in a talk that I did, I found that um, rather than talk about every painting, I could have her to match a song with some of the paintings and sing about them. 
And so I, I, I just wondered through a switch of faith, what if she could sing about people's lives after listening to them, just like I'm drawing the people and I'm responding to them, each person, and I'm listening to them in writing. And what could art do for the medical um, community? So I'm drawing different people. This gentleman here, this is a man and his wife. And um, he was a former doctor, but, um, and she was too, but then became a patient. And so when, 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 um, when things switch like that, it's, it's a, that's an interesting discussion. Um, this gentleman here, I spoke to him. He was a patient there. And if you see his hands, his hands never stop moving. You think Trump hands moves when he talks. This man, you know. And so, you know, when I drew him, I couldn't capture those hands still. <laughs> um, and, uh, but he was an interesting guy. You know, one of the things he said was um, he talked about laughter and how left, laughter was, was like medicine. Um, but he had this interesting statement about death, too, that's on the bottom. It says, we don't always know if a person uh, is suffering, and death can be a friend. Um, I learned a whole lot. How this project was effective, um, this gentleman, uh, wonderful gentleman, he used to be a DJ uh, in Boston. And um, some medical condition, I don't know what it was, struck him. But at some point, um, he had to go to the hospital. And you know how they make you wear the hospital clothes? It's like a robe kind of thing. And that was, um, um, that was really getting to him. Um, he says, uh, that second statement on that, I was already aggravated uh, with my condition. Um, but uh, one of the doctors decided to let him wear his regular clothes. Um, and that little decision to let him wear his clothes was a decision to, to in, in essence, to let him have his dignity. Let him have his dignity. And it's something about, um, they told me, I was questioning the doctors and I was talking to them, and he made an interesting statement on here too. One of the doctors that he grew close to, the one who let him, uh, made the decision, let him wear his clothes, um, was a very sensitive doctor and really cared about uh, this particular patient. And he said, he made the statement, and this really um, got me. He said, I never, um, I never, um, how does it say, I, I want to, uh, uh, I'm going to have to step up to it and read this. Um, I never experienced that. Um, uh, uh, that. That. That, uh, he spoke about he never really experienced that from another man. I never really experienced that from another man, like somebody caring. He grew up without his father, and he never experienced another man caring for him like that. And, um, and that really touched him. And so what the project did um, was it brought out, it brought to light how uh, empathy, how caring, can transform um, um, how we interact, heal, how, how people heal. For example, uh, what they told me was that, and this is another doctor, I got an interesting story about him. Um, what they told me was that um, when doctors come into medical school, there are people who really want to uh, help people. They want to help people heal. But as they go to school, um, they learn more and more and more, and the stress is more and more, and they're, they're pushed to learn and grow and learn and grow. And before long, as you're seeing people, they become um, uh, 
they become types. They become a, a type of disease. They become um, something that, you know, you just got a diagnosis. This is that type, and this is it, it diagnosed, and this is what you do to cure that, rather than a person who needs help. This doctor was interesting because this is one of those moments, y'all, okay? That doctor, we were in the other side of the hospital, and I was drawing, you know, in the we would bring people out in the hallways, and I would draw them out in the hallway. For some reason, I decided I wanted to draw that doctor in front of that, that thing. And so we'd go to the other end of the, uh, uh, of the uh, hospital to draw in front of this thing, okay? I didn't know all that this doctor had done, but after speaking with him, I found out that he started this, pro this great program. And, um, and I was so in in interested and intrigued in it. And so what I decided to do, I didn't tell anybody. I said, you know, that's a great thing. What that wall was for was people who have done great things at that hospital that they honored them. They won this sort of great award and they put their plaque on, that, on the wall. And there was these empty plaques. I decided to draw him on one of them, and I didn't tell anybody. It was a little sketch. It's, it's this one. If I could do my pointer, I would point it out. Um, and later on, I was talking to the director of the hospital, and I wasn't going to tell anybody. I was just going to let it sit there, but I, I mentioned to him, you know, I decided to put him on one of those plaques in the back of that drawing, and he was so surprised. I was wondering why he was so surprised. He was so surprised because that gentleman was next in line to get that award. <laughs> You know, what was interesting about this project is that, is it just these drawings? Is that the project? Well, no. So um, they were recorded. They, they sort of, there was a, a, a camera person there. He was actually a photographer. And he was recording the process of me sort of talking to the people and some of those conversations. And then the singer was listening. And so we did this presentation where we went through and we would show some of the drawings like this and we had the drawings displayed in the hospital and she would come up um, in the presentation and she would sing these songs about um, uh, the different people, like songs that she felt like matched something that she heard or, uh, with that person. Um, and some of the things that these doctors said, I think I learned more than anybody and I was moved more than anybody just being there and being able to talk to some of the different people and hearing some of the stories. Um, and I, I'm, I'm gonna I'm go on because I got a, a number of drawings there, but I'm at the point now where I did that project. I have to step back and think about all that it is. You know, there is still the recordings of all of this out there somewhere with the hospital. And um, there's still sort of the footage and there is still, when we did the presentation that day, it was such a magnificent thing because there were doctors, I remember this one stoic doctor, and they all knew him. I didn't, I didn't know who he was, obviously. Um, uh, and this gentleman's story is something else. He worked in the lunchroom, and he met a man one day in the lunchroom who seemed down, and he offered him a sandwich. And after all, he called a man Pops, and the story is over there to the, um, to the left, my left-hand side. It's over there somewhere where we talk about Pops. Where he ends up trying to cheer that guy up and offer him a sandwich, Pops ends up being a kind of mentor for him for the rest of Pops' life. Pops was at the hospital because his wife was there. But Pops ended up taking him on as a kind of, of a son. And just became, he, when we were talking, he was playing for me on his phone. All this, hey, happy birthday, hey, where you at? I'm, you know, invited them over, and they just formed this relationship. And so what I found was that caring from the doctors all the way to the lunchroom staff helped in manifesting healing, all sorts of healing in a hospital environment. And, um, and that's an obvious thing, right? You know, if you care, but when you get in, a job and in the process and you're going along, you kind of, you know, people think about it in different ways. You would never think, you know, the lunchroom people need to care. <laughs> think they put the food out and keep on moving. Um, 
this singer, y'all want to hear? Really? Okay, great. Um, so she sung at one of the, um, uh, I, I can't, I, I, the, the, she's going to be singing here, but this is from my show at Valley House. And I just wanted you all to hear her to kind of get a sense about, she was singing about the different pieces, and she's singing about that piece right there. So. I lost the child. And so that child represents that child. And the child is envisioned on the other side of the sheet. So we're on this side, and that child is on the other side. But in essence, you know, what's, what's trying to be sort of spoken about is that they're still one family. And if I look at the situation through eyes of faith, then maybe, you know, David says it this way. Uh, the child will know, she, that child might not come to me, but there's a day when I'll come to them. So it's, it's about looking at the situation through eyes of faith and still seeing a kind of unity. Um, some of the things that I think you might notice, everybody's sort of wearing blue, or there's a bluish color, bluish. Um, and then um, the obvious white background, which is like kind of a, a clear background with this uh, sort of painterly approach on each one. Um, and I think maybe, just maybe, uh, this, this would be Probably a, a, a good opportunity to bring in Sister Tanya. <laughs> she can rescue me right here. <laughs> uh, Sister Tanya. Well, I guess this will be my last little visit with you guys. It's been awesome. So this is our family here. And this little song here, real easy, real basic, but it has a really big We don't necessarily realize the sacrifice that the ones at home are sometimes really sacrificing. And it's one. 
so these were those presentations. Um, it was an amazing thing. I'm still, you know, I contemplated. So what, what is the art? Is the art the drawing? Is the art the singing? Is the art the presentation? We, I'm sitting back thinking about that, thinking about it. And at some point, I'll get the right response. I'll go through. Um, I did a series during this last show at uh, Valley House of families and issues that contemporary families are facing. This one dealt with incarceration, which is a major issue out there. Um, the one in, uh, sort of figure in the cage being in, in made in one medium, the paintings being another sort of 2D medium, and yet these people all sort of situated together. And you see the uh, young man looking up at uh, this figure in the cage. And I could go on talking about these, but um, I chose to do with the paintings of families to do each person individually and put them together. And part of that was because I wanted to talk about the individuality of a person, yet the unity of a group. And I wanted them to be individuals, yet I wanted them to be united. And, um, and so you see that. And you know, there's, there's sort of, we could go on about the story there, but this one is called Frederick's Family. And the materials there, there's oil paint. That gray clay-like material you see is called cellu clay. And, um, and then there's wooden panels sometimes. Here's a close up. And here's some of the, that's the picture of the families you just saw. Here are some of those paintings close up. Sort of like expressionist painting. That one actually got worked more than that. Um, you know, the, the hat at the end, I mean, the, the, uh, uh, the, the bandana she's wearing on her head, it had patterns and stuff in it, and later I added all that stuff. But at this point, that's what it looked like. That's Sonny, my son. You notice there's a square, a rectangle within the rectangle. And um, the paintings literally started off the size of the middle rectangle, but I felt like they needed more space. And so then I added this, this other rectangle in there, and it worked the sort of geometry um, underneath the organic quality of the, um, the kind of expressionistic painting. Here's some of the other families. This was a single mother. She had um, a number of children. And um, the figure to the far, my far left, was her oldest child, uh, Sierra. Others. There's always a, a kind of rhythm that I'm looking for, kind of you know relationships between the pieces. Um, one, how each piece works together is is th there's a puzzle thing, and somewhere I'm always interested in finding these ways of the complexity of that. For instance, what happened if I showed this painting in a different orchestration? Then maybe it would kind of read differently. This is uh, some of the, uh, this is one nobody's seen before. The next, uh, I don't know if anybody's seen that one before. Um, this couple had lost a child. And um, in the drawing, I decided to draw them with two children. And since this time, they've had another child, and uh, I'm expecting another one. This is one that's in a show that's up now. Me and my wife did a printmaking residency at one of the local colleges. And this is a part of a group of etchings that, that I've done now. And this grouping was at Stephen Harvey's show. 
And I could go into sort of talking about those, but we won't finish. <laughs> uh, show you this map. So let me see if I can get the arrow on the screen. OK. So Holland Hills, the neighborhood, uh, the Holland Hills neighborhood is right over here. But I got a house project um, that's going on right over here in Fort, Fort Worth. So it's not that far. It's kind of like right around the freeway. You, you, you probably can't tell distance there, but um, it started years ago, really. I started painting my grandmother. This, this painting of my grandmother probably happened in 2003 or four. Um, and just like what you saw in some of the other paintings of the quilt, I painted her again and again and again. And I, I couldn't get enough because there was more to get, right? So this was like in 2004. And then later on in 2000 and, uh, 2003, then later, before this one, there were others uh, in her room, all of them in this room. But then I started, decided to do this whole project dealing with her. And I wanted to like, talk about this figure of Big Mama. Um, anybody got a big mama out there? Okay, y'all might not. <laughs> big mama, Medea. Um, I came back later. Uh, this is more 2006, seven. Um, same place, but the room was a little different then. Same lady. And I did, I started on this painting about family, but I wanted to start it with this central person of Big Mama. And I was kind of gonna build around her. Um, at this point in her life, she's sort of like a single mother and everybody meets over Big Mama's house. At, um, and she, she's no longer, obviously, she, she, her kids are all grown, but her house is still the center point for the family. And with this piece, also there was a thing where I was finding old wood that kind of reminded me of the house and framing it. And um, I never expected that um, there was something I was after, which is I wanted to talk about family. Um, I would, you know, this picture just spontaneously happened. I went over there to paint her one day, ended up getting my aunt in there and my uncle in there, everybody in the painting on that day. And that kind of sort of spontaneous happening was, was, was good, but I, I'm gonna just dial through and see if I can kind of explain. So I didn't think that I was painting her in the last two years of her life. It was a two year process, these processes of going over there, painting at the house. I came to kind of talk about Big Mama and the family and the Big Mama that I remembered, but it ended up being um, the last two years of her life and she was sort of struggling with certain issues. And later on after um, she passed away, uh, I kept, thinking about that space. And um, before, I, I ended up purchasing the space from uh, the family. And um, I went into the space and I just started painting the empty rooms there. And so this was a big process. And I don't, um, it was a process of just thinking and it's interesting, so my, my, my topic was, look, think, and respond. Um, and you can look at that and think about it as, this is the same room, by the way, that she was sitting in before, but we're looking at it from her position. Like if you were sitting in that chair she was sitting in and looking back, this is where she was sitting at. So this is that same room, but it's all cleared out. There's nothing in it at this point. And, um, and so that process could be thought about as look, think, and respond all equal, or it can be thought about as look, comma, think and respond. Um, and I'm kind of thinking, and I'm, I'm trying to think about loss, emptiness, what happens when this house is all empty? Empty spaces and broken windows, books and stuff. Um, I literally was the one who had to clean out like a lot of the stuff in there and end up having to tear the carpet off the floor. And, um, 
And so I painted a, a, a bunch of empty rooms um, as a way of thinking about this. What would this house be? This is what it looked like at one point. And it didn't look, always look like that. You know, for, for example, um, when, I, when, I was, when I was over there, it had a, a, um, a porch on it. But you see a tear in the top of that porch, and water started coming through that tear, and so we had to tear the whole porch off the front of it. But I decided at some point after, um, I didn't know what I would do, but I wanted this house to be a place, to be a space that could, could, um, could have a, a positive effect in the community. Um, Still later, I did this show. The first show was all centered around Big Mama. And next, um, I did her children directly. And these are some of the large paintings of her children. And these are, uh, the paintings are four by six feet. And um, that's my Aunt Mary. And they all had three, like three different titles. And it was about kind of looking at these individuals and thinking about them from different perspectives. And they were also sort of charcoal drawings and oil paintings mixed together. So the hair and the shirt is kind of like charcoal. And there's a charcoal drawing up underneath the whole painting. I just went on top of it and started the painting and left it at that point rather than keep on painting it. So this one was the same way. It started off with a charcoal drawing and then, you know, oil paint over the top. A lot of fixative. Well, not uh, for the artist. Um, what do you call it? Uh, Final coat, not final coat fix, I'm sorry, uh, matte finish. Like layers and layers of matte finish and then you can rub that charcoal and it won't come up. Um, th this was a piece I, I recently, sort of recently did um, and thinking about the house, thinking about loss. This is uh, what started to happen with some of the younger people and this is kind of, uh, is the funeral shirts. Um, at funerals, you know, people usually wear suits and stuff, but um, there was a younger generation that came around and they weren't used to wearing suits. And so they started um, at funerals, when a young person died, they would uh, make a t-shirt for that person and everybody wore that t-shirt and that has become um, a kind of tradition now. And, um, and, uh, and so wearing these t-shirts it's now more than just young people. They'll do it with older people, maybe to a, either a part of the funeral, um, the wake, or uh, the um, people will make funeral t-shirts and they'll wear them. And I painted my, this is me and that, um, the t-shirt there is my sister. We lost her uh, at the age of 25. Um, and it, it's, it's about dealing with that loss in, um, And there's something about wearing that T-shirt. You know, it's like maybe uh, having, you know, have the whole idea that uh, this person is with you. It, it, it's interesting how the shirt said "gone but not forgotten," but it looks like one in re, in in mirror image. So this was the house a little later as I kept working on it. And I was forming it, and I was thinking about it being a project space. Um, I wish I could have got you. If I could have had a little more hustle time, I, I would have got you this house what it looks like today. Because today, you know, that hole underneath, you can't see under there. There's a little bit of paint around the edge, that, that top perimeter. But it's still sort of like that. And now it's going to be this space. Well, y'all want to look inside? Okay. <laughs> um, this is one of the rooms in the back of the house. It turned into this like chapel-like space. You just saw some of those paintings, and they're sitting in chairs against the walls. I just started taking in paintings that I had made about the family, some paintings that were left over from when I was painting over there, started hanging them up on different spots in the walls, put, placing them to get a sense about how to, 
how to use this space, how to show in this space and use it as a, um, the space has a type of presence to it, a sense of history to it. The house, the original part of the house was actually built in 1900, believe it or not. We had to go through and, I, and we reframed around these windows. They were in real bad shape, but um, stripped all the sheetrock off the walls, all the carpet off the floor. There was even a lower ceiling in there when my grandmother was living. But when I started looking through, the, you know, I would crawl up to the attic and I could see that there was about two feet of room. There was a, sec there was a second ceiling. And so I tore the first ceiling out and the second ceiling was up to, at 10 feet. And so now I'm thinking about that space as a kind of project space. And the first thing that I want to do is, um, oh, oh, wait, oh, I'm sorry, sorry, go back. OK, wait, the first thing I want to do is look and listen. I want to listen to the family. I want to listen to the community. I want to hear what's on people's minds and what's on people's hearts. And many times, um, I want to think about that. Um, and I've had this thing of thinking through working. I think I'm going to start painting, continue to paint families. Um, and I, I, it, it won't be the work that's in there now. Um, but I'll, I'll paint families, and I'll listen to people. And already in, in the listening that I've done, I started this room in the back um, of bird cages. And I, I really wanted to talk about um, the young man, men incarceration thing. Um, and, uh, and so these young men, uh, there's this thing about you know, keeping a bird in the cage and how a bird is meant to fly, but we clip their wings so they can't fly and keep them in the cage. And that maybe there's, this is a kind of analogy. And so I have about 20 bird cages in the back, one of the back rooms. And, um, and so there's gonna be an exhibition there. It'll be inside the space, it'll be outside the space. The space is on about 1.9 acres. And, um, and then, as a continuing thing, the first thing, exhibition will be about looking and listening. And then maybe at some point about responding to that. A Couple of other things. If you could be in my studio last week, maybe last week or the week before last, what would you see? You would have saw this. This is a painting I did. Um, it was actually sort of commission piece, but it was a commission piece of my choosing. I, I painted this family. Um, it's called Sonadores, and that means the dreamers. And um, this family is a beautiful family. Um, they're gonna be framed up, all with different kind of framing, like this young man up front. He's gonna have this thick sort of gold frame on him. Hers is gonna be thin laced with a little bit of gold, and those are gonna be simple, and there's a rack that they sit on that you can hardly see at the bottom, and they hang on the wall. Uh, this gentleman wanted, has a, 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 um, um, this collection, but this collection of American art, and I wanted to talk about the Dreamers. In that community where Big Mama's house is, um, it's a community that's a mixed community. It's uh, predominantly black and Hispanic, and this, the, the issues that um, uh, some of the Hispanic community was facing there, um, I just wanted to talk about it by showing this wonderful family. And last but not least, people always ask me, I got one of the questions today about um, President Bush. Um, I started um, tutoring uh, the president in painting. And, um, I did this recently, just about a couple of weeks ago, I finished uh, maybe the, I think it is, it's the only portrait that has been done of him from life. Um, 
It took me about six sessions painting. And uh, he thinks, and some of his um, uh, people who know him well, that it'll be one of the most significant paintings of him um, simply because it's not presidential. And I, it's a bad slide, but I just, I thought I'd show you anyway. Um, it's very direct. We're not in a suit. We're not in a tie. It's just about him being just another person. And all that that means. It's called um, George Walker Bush. And people never, they really, they know him as George W. They never knew that his middle name was Walker. Um, and I thought it important to call it his full name because somewhere when his mother was naming him and father, they thought this Walker was important. He's become W, but maybe now he can be George Walker Bush. That's all, y'all. <laughs>